Hi everyone, welcome to another video in the AWS Database series. I am Surendra Mani Mohan, a Database Solutions Architect here at AWS. In this video, we're going to talk about one of the important features of Amazon Aurora called Backtrack. Let's jump right into it. In this video, we'll start with a brief introduction about Amazon Aurora and its architecture. Next, we'll discuss about the Backtrack and how it is different from a snapshot restore or a point in time restore and its use cases. And we'll follow up by a backtrack demo. We'll finish up with some of the current limitations with the backtrack. First, let's discuss about what is Amazon Aurora. Amazon Aurora is a relational database service that combines the speed and availability of high end commercial databases with the simplicity and cost effectiveness of open source databases and is delivered as a managed service. Next, we'll discuss about Aurora architecture. With Amazon Aurora, we decouple the compute from the storage subsystem so they can scale independently. Aurora uses scale-out distributed architecture that replicates a shared storage volume across three availability zones with the two copies of data in each availability zone. The storage volume segmented in 10 gig production group and it's typed across hundreds or thousands of storage nodes depending on the size of the volume. This provides data redundancy, and high availability for your data. The storage volume uses a log structured storage. It is designed with the database interactions in mind. Aurora uses quorum-based model for writes. So when you perform a write, we send write across all six, co six copies of storage nodes, and there may be hundreds or even thousands of storage nodes, but we only need an acknowledgement from four. This provides a better performance for durability and availability we want. For a read, we only need to read from one storage node. We don't need to do a quorum read, which can be from the closest storage node and it will be much faster. The cluster storage volume automatically grows as the amount of data in your database increases. So we don't need to worry about provisioning. However, a cluster storage volume can grow up to 128 terabytes. The data continuously back to S3, which is designed to provide 11 nines of durability. Let's discuss about what is backtracking. Most of us have been in this situation. You got a page in the middle of the night and you want to do a very simple fix to a production database. You run a query and after a moment you realize that you forgot a back class or you dropped the wrong table. With the backtrack, you can rewind the database cluster to a specific time. It allows you to undo the mistake by rewinding the cluster without restoring the data from a backup or doing a point in time restore. This backup is performed on an existing cluster. Let's discuss about some of the advantages of this backtrack feature. If you accidentally perform any destructive actions, such as dropping a table or use a delete without the bad class, backtracks allows you to undo these changes quickly and safely. Backtracks allows you to rewind the cluster in a matter of minutes so that we can able to continue the operation without taking more downtime. And third, you can perform this backtrack on your DB cluster back and forth to identify the correct point when a, when a particular change has occurred. Let's say, for example, you backtrack to the time and you identify that that's not the correct time. You can forward in time to identify the correct position. Let me walk through a scenario to understand the backtrack feature better. Let's say you're performing a testing on your database to understand how your application react with each of these changes. In this case, you're making your changes starting at time zero and T1. Then at some point after that, you want to rewind back to the specific time because you identify that you need to do some more testing from that point. Backtrack rewinds a cluster to T1 and the changes that you made after that will be invisible because these changes will be available in the cluster storage, but those changes will be invisible when you perform the backtrack operations. From that point, you can continue to make the changes with the time T2 and T3 and so on. Now you made changes or fixes. Now we want to rewind back again to perform some more testing from T3. Backtrack allows you to go back and forth until you find the right time that you're happy with. And also one thing to keep in mind, Aurora always backtrack to a time that is consistent for the DB cluster. This is just to eliminate the uncommitted transaction in your database. When you specify a time for a backtrack, 
error automatically chooses the nearest possible consistent time to perform the backtrack operation. When using backtrack on your Aurora DB cluster, you'll need to keep in mind about these two windows. As you make updates to your Aurora DB cluster with the backtracking enabled, you will generate change records. These change records will be retained for the target window you specify. The more changes you make, the more change record you store in your backtrack window. The less changes you make, the less change record you store in your backtrack window. You can think of backtrack window as the goal for the maximum amount of time that you want to be able to backtrack your DB cluster. In some cases, DB cluster can't store enough change record to backtrack to a maximum amount of time. In those cases, your actual backtrack window will be smaller than the target backtrack window. This can happen when you have extremely heavy workload. This will generate a lot of change record. During this scenario, the actual backtrack window will be smaller than the target backtrack window. In these cases, we'll send you a notification when your actual backtrack window is smaller. Let's discuss about what we are going to do in this demo. I will walk you through creating a Aurora MySQL cluster with the backtrack enabled. Then we'll generate some data in the DB cluster. Then we'll drop the table and backtrack the Aurora cluster to recover from unintended changes. Then we'll finish off with a metrics that you can use to monitor the backtrack for your Aurora cluster. Without further ado, let's jump into the demo. Let's first go ahead and create Aurora DB cluster with the backtrack enabled for this demo. I'm already in the RDS management console. Let's go ahead and click create database. I'm not going to go over the details on each and every options here in the create database page. We have several videos discussing about this option. I will mention about the important options that are needed for this demo. Let's leave the creation as a standard create. At the time of this video, backtrack only avail available for Aurora MySQL provision DB cluster. So let's leave the engine type as Amazon Aurora and edition as MySQL compatibility edition and the capacity type as provisioned. Let's leave the template as production for now. And let's go ahead and rename the DB cluster identifier. I'm going to change it to backtrack dash demo. Let's go ahead and provide the credentials for this cluster. Let's leave the username as admin and let's provide the password. I'm going to change the DB instance class dbr5x large for this demo. And in the connectivity section, my VPC and my subnet group and my security VPC security group is already selected, so I'm not going to change any of these. Backtrack will be in the additional configuration section. So let's go ahead and click on additional configuration. Let's go ahead and enable the backtrack. Please keep in mind, at the moment you can only enable the backtrack when you, when you are creating the DB cluster. It is not possible to modify the existing cluster to enable the backtrack. Let's go ahead and enable the backtrack for now. And let's provide the backtrack window. Backtrack window um, is basically a maximum amount of time that you want to keep the changelog records in the DB cluster. For this demo, let's provide 24 hours. And I'm going to leave the other options as it is. So let's go ahead and create database. Okay. The DB cluster is up and running. Let's go ahead and check if the backtrack is enabled on this cluster. So we have a backtrack dash demo cluster here. Let's go ahead and select this cluster. And under the maintenance and backup section, we'll find the backtrack information. So let's go ahead and select maintenance and backups. And under the backtrack section, we can see that the backtrack is enabled. 
and in this section we also see the backtrack windows so which is the target window and also the actual window if you created a cluster just one hour ago you will see the actual window is one hour and the target window is 24 hours so that's the difference that we are seeing here and also it will provide the information about the earliest restorable time and if you want to check the metrics the number of change records that this cluster is generated you can use this link below now let's go ahead and create some tables on this cluster here i have two terminals one i'm going to use to log into the cluster to create and drop the table and another terminal which i'm going to use to run the python script to generate the data into the table so let's first go ahead and log in to the aurora cluster that we created So now let's log into the Aurora cluster. Let's go ahead and create the database. So I'm going to create the database demo. And we use the demo. And now I'm going to create the simple table to test this feature. So I'm going to create the backtrack table. OK, now we have a table that we created in our cluster. So let's go ahead and insert some data into the table. So I wrote small Python script to insert the data into the table. Let's go ahead and run it in our second terminal. So it's going to take a few minutes. I'm just going to insert 1,000 rows into the table. So let's go ahead and check if the data is inserted successfully. Or from backtrack table. So here we can see that uh, 1000 rows are inserted successfully. Let's go ahead and note down the timestamp. Select current timestamp. So it's showing in a UTC um, time zone, which is fine for this demo. Now let's go ahead and drop the table that we created. Drop table and then backtrack. So let's go ahead and drop the table. And now let's select the time. Let's check if the table exists or not. Show tables. Okay, no tables in the database. Let's go and look at the time step again. Okay, now we have created the table and load some data in the table with the Python script. And then we verify the table is um, created and the data is there. And then we drop the table and note on the timestamp. So let's go to the cluster and backtrack to the time that we just before we drop the table which is 2051 okay now i'm back in the console so i selected the backtrack demo cluster now let's go to actions and click backtrack so in this section we're going to provide that timestamp that you want to backtrack the cluster to this specific time that we wanted so let's go and select the date just today and the time that we're going to select is on in the PST time zone so that is 12 51 04 so which is at 2051 04 UTC before we click backtrack to be cluster one thing to keep in mind here is when you perform a backtrack during that time, the cluster will be unavailable. This process will take a few minutes. For this demo, let's go ahead and click Backtrack TB Cluster. So now uh, the cluster is currently backtracking. So we'll wait for a few minutes and come back and check. OK, the cluster is backtracked successfully. So we can see the notification here. Successfully backtracked TB Cluster backtrack demo at this given time. So let's go and connect to this cluster and verify if the table exists. Let's go back to the terminal. Give the password. Now let's use our demo database. Let's first check if the table exists or not. So as we can see, the backtrack table exists now. So let's go ahead and to uh, count star on this table. 
Okay, there you go. So we have we have successfully recovered our drop table using the backtrack feature. I wanted to show you a few metrics to monitor the backtrack for your Aurora cluster using CloudWatch. Let's see what other metrics are. Here I created the CloudWatch dashboard with the three metrics. The first metric is a backtrack change record stored, which is basically the actual number of change records used by your cluster. Second one is a backtrack window actual, which is a difference between the target backtrack window and the actual backtrack window, which is measured in minutes. And the final is a backtrack window alert, which shows how often the actual backtrack window is smaller than the target backtrack window for a given period of time. You can even set up a CloudWatch monitoring so that you will get alerted whenever there is a change. There are a few things to keep in mind when using the backtrack. Backtrack feature can be enabled only when you create a new DB cluster or doing the restore from the DB snapshot. The maximum amount of times to store the change log records in your DB cluster is 72 hours. When you perform a backtrack on the cluster, it affects the entire cluster. During the time, there will be a brief downtime. So before you perform the backtrack on your cluster, make sure you pause the application. You can backtrack the database clone to a time before the database clone was created. However, you can use the original database to backtrack your backtrack to a time before the clone was created. These are some of the things to keep in mind when using the backtrack. To, to see the full list, please see our documentation. Thanks for watching this video. I hope this was helpful and you'll apply this feature in your own infrastructure. As always, happy cloud computing from all of us here at AWS.